Monk. Brought to you by L and M Builders with the miracle tip. King size, regular. Both at the same low price. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Anybody here this morning? I'll be right in, Doc. All right, Matt. <laughs> I'll just see. Oh, the girls that grow so tall in Kansas. The girls that grow so tall in Kansas. The girls that grow so tall and the boys, oh, they love them all. Uh, oh, what's this? Oh, oh, wow. And they marry them all in the fall. In Kansas. Now, that's a poor way to start the day, Doc. <laughs> oh, well, what's a poor way to start the day, Matt? All right, getting up in the morning. Uh, getting up the way you do, maybe it is, Marshal Dillon. Uh, but not out on the prairie, where all the little birds are. <laughs> what started you off being a happy little bird this morning, anyway? Oh, where's Chester? I'd rather talk to him. <laughs> well, he's due back any time now. He's due back? Yeah, he took a prisoner over to Wichita a couple of days ago. He did? Oh, say, if I'd have known that, I'd have gone with him, Matt. Now, what for? Oh, just to get out of Dodge for a while. Well, you've been out of Dodge for the last two days. Oh, yes, but delivering a baby in a mud dugout isn't exactly what I was uh, thinking about, man. <clears throat> yeah, I know what you were thinking about. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Uh, hello, Chester. <laughs> Sorry, Doc. Uh, how was Wichita, Chester? Oh, see, that's a big town, Doc. Real big, isn't it? Yeah, but I wasn't there long. The Santa Fe going east got there at noon, and the next one back here left at 2 o'clock. Oh, you could have stayed another day. Heavens, yeah. Oh, how often does a man get a chance to have a little fun? Well, I would have, but the sheriff there had some news he wanted me to tell Mr. Dillon. Some news? Yes, sir, it's about the Carp brothers. They've been hanging around Wichita the past month, and then they left. The sheriff said he heard they are headed this way. I didn't even know the Carp brothers were in Kansas. I thought they worked the Dakota Territory. Well, that's what the sheriff said, but they must have got drove out. Anyway, he said they was awful broke and hungry looking, but as long as they didn't try nothing there, he left them alone. Bank robbers, aren't they, Matt? Yeah, so I've heard, Doc, but nobody's caught them at it yet. Well, we'll catch them if they come to Dodge. Yeah, maybe. But they could be here right now. How come the sheriff didn't send me a telegram, Chester? It'd have been a little faster, wouldn't it? Well, I don't know. I didn't think to ask him. Uh, I think I'll go down to the bank. I'll be back directly. Hey, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Uh, you're up early this morning. I went to bed early last night. Uh. Oh, where were you headed? Delmonico's. Heard they got some fresh eggs in last month. <laughs> You're spoiled. But I'll go with you if you like. I'd like it fine, Matt. i got to see Mr. Bodkin at the bank here first. Well, why don't you go on ahead and I'll join you, huh? Well, how long will you be? Oh, just a couple of minutes. I'll wait in the bank for you. Okay. But if you're longer than a couple of minutes, you can find me at the restaurant. I'm feeling pretty healthy this morning. <laughs> you ought to go to bed early every night. If I did, I couldn't afford breakfast. place looks deserted. We must be the only people up in Dodge, except for the cashier there. 
Maybe I ought to wait till after breakfast, Matt. No, Kitty, I'm afraid this business has waited too long as it is. filters are sweeping the country. L and M, the filter tip cigarette everyone's talking about, everyone's changing to. Columnist Dorothy Kilgallen told us there's nothing like L and M's filter. Gives you more flavor, too. David Wayne wrote, L and M's have the best filter of them all. Miracle tip is right. There's nothing like it. Diana Lynn says, I had no idea a filter cigarette could taste so good as L and M's. They're light and mild and full of flavor. Yes, L&M's are truly sweeping the country, breaking more sales records every day. The reason? It's the filter that counts, and no filter compares with L&M's Miracle Tip. Notice how easy it draws. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine. Yes? This is it, L&M filter. This is it, something new. Now two sizes. L&M filters, new king size and regular too. This is it. L&M filters, L&M filters with the miracle tip. So join the trend to L&M. King size, regular, both at the same low price. Marshal Dillon, come in. Morning, Mr. Bodkin. You uh, come to deposit money, Marshal, or to borrow some? Uh, well, neither. I uh, I came to protect it. What? Mr. Bodkin, did you ever hear of the Carp Brothers? Why, no, Marshal. I don't believe I have. Oh, they've never been around Dodge. All I know is that they're brothers, and the older one's name is Joe. Well, why are you telling me this, Marshal? Well, I've heard that they're headed for Dodge, and I've heard that they're bank robbers. Bank robbers? Well, what do you plan to do? Well, I can't hire deputies until after a crime's been committed, Mr. Botkin, but if you'd like to, it might be a good idea to let a half a dozen of them or so loaf around here for a oh, while. Certainly, certainly, Marshal. I don't mind a little expense. What's, What's that? That's them now. Where's my gun? Don't shoot, or we kill the woman. They got kidding. We're not shooting. They'd kill the cashier. Hank, get around there and start filling that sack. Yeah. All right, lady. You walk in front of me. Either one of you try something, she dies. He's coming this way, Marshal. Shoot him. Don't be a fool. Kitty's in the way. Besides, he's got a gun in her back. They're robbing my bank. Shut up. And I'll shoot him. Kitty's on you. My hands are up, mister. He was going to shoot. Now, that was smart of you. Well, I'll be. I caught the Marshal himself. Well, I will have as soon as I get his gun. Don't move now. I'm not moving. And this is the first time I ever disarmed a lawman. Feels good. Joe Carp. How'd you know my name? Well, I heard you were headed this way, Carp, but I didn't hear it in time. You sure didn't, Marshal. Is that your brother you came in with? What difference does it make? Look, take your money, Carp. Take it, and I'll ride out with you, and nobody will bother you. No, Matt. Shut up, Kitty. Oh. I see. Nobody will shoot at you if I'm along. Not while we're in Dodge, maybe, but we'd be followed. Then take me with you, as far as you like. No, Marshal. We'd be followed anyway. I got a better idea. We're taking her, Kitty. Don't do it, Carp. Of course I'll do it. And first sign I see we're being chased, whoever it is going to find Kitty laying right in the trail. Fresh killed. And if you don't think I'll do it, I'll tell you something. First person I ever killed was a woman. So don't let nobody follow us. Nobody else will follow you, I promise you that. I'd hate to lose such a pretty girl. Matt, it's all right. Forget it. Sure. Now, let's get 
You go in that office and sit down, Marshal. Hank's got the money ready. We're leaving. So long, Kitty. So long. Nobody seems to heard me kill the cashier. So don't you run out and tell nobody, Marshal. I won't. Yeah, Marshal, if I do shoot Kitty, I promise you one thing. Yeah. I'll do it with your gun. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? You think they'll give her any breakfast? Uh, no. No. People don't need much food, Chester. They can go for days without any at all. Well, I know that, Doc, but Miss Kitty just ain't used to it. It's water people need. They'll have water. <laughs> they will if they took any with them. It's mighty dry out on the prairie this time of but year. But it's not that dry. Any fool can find water sooner or later. Sure, if he follows a buffalo herd long enough, about a week, maybe. There's other ways, Chester. Like what? Ever hear of a divining rod? Oh, for land's sake. What's outlaws doing with the vine? I wasn't talking about outlaws. Well, what was it? Well, I wasn't talking. talking. Can't a man oh, talk? Yes, Just a sec. Yes, sir. I, I guess we've waited long enough. They must have covered three or four miles by now. Yes, sir. Is everything ready? Well, everything I could think of, Mr. Dillon. All right, let's get going. Uh, well, well, good luck, Matt. Thanks, Doc. Keep an eye on things. It may be a long time before we get back. <laughs> From the bank window, I'd watch the Carp brothers ride north out of Dodge. So Chester and I started off in the same direction. On the other side of the Arkansas, we picked up their trail and followed it easily all morning. But we were careful to stay way behind them and out of sight. Although we probably could have run them down in a few hours. That was the hardest part of it. Forcing ourselves to hold back. Go slow. Dylan, you think Carp would really do it? Do what, Chester? You know. Do you? Yeah. Chester, hmm? look up ahead there on the ground. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, let's see who it is. It's a man, Mr. Dillon, some cowboy. Hey, he's been shot. Bring your water back. Yes, sir. Well, he's still breathing. Yeah, pour a little water on him, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, well. Hey, fella. You want a drink? Uh, hey, you thirsty? Well, have some more. Here. Marshal Dillon from Dodge. Tell me what happened, huh? Them two men and that girl, it was... Hold my head up, Marshal. <laughs> that better? Yeah, full of blood, Marshal. They hurt my back. Yeah. Blaine is my name, Blaine. Well, what happened? Well, them two men, Marshal, and I know that girl oughtn't to be with them. I could tell the way she looked at me. You're after him, ain't you? I'm after him. Well, I seen them, and I rode up, and I asked them who they was. They didn't like that, Marshal. No. I know something was wrong with that girl and all, but, but I ain't no gunman. He shot me right out of my saddle. Both of them to once. We'll get them, Blake. If that's any help to you. Well, it don't matter now. That girl hadn't ought to be with him. Could you hear them? Did they say anything? Yeah. Something about a, a cabin. I don't know where. 
Yeah. Look, Blaine, my partner here, Chester, he'll stay with you. Sure will. I'll take care of you, Blaine. Oh, thanks, but but it won't do no good. You better go off and help catch him, fellas. I'll handle them. Take whatever you want off my saddle, Chester, and get a fire going here. Yes, sir. Uh, you'll uh, be fine, Blaine. So long. country, breaking more sales records every day. The reason? It's the filter that counts. And no filter compares with L&M's Miracle Tip for quality or effectiveness. And notice how easy it draws. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine. Effective filtration. Our statement of quality goes unchallenged. L&M is America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Buy L&M King Size. Buy L&M Regular. Buy L&M's by the carton. King Size, Regular, both at the same low price. L&M, light and mild. ahead, tracking slowly for a couple of hours. Then I saw a dust cloud behind me. I stopped and waited. It was Chester. He rode up and looked at me for a moment. Then without saying a word, we continued on the trail across the prairie. We traveled in silence until dark. And then we saw a cabin. I couldn't chance going up to it, so we unsaddled and turned our horses loose and crept into a little draw about a hundred yards away. And got down and waited. We waited all night. Dawn came, and then the sun, hot as ever. Ain't they near coming out of that cabin, Mr. Jones? Yeah, sooner or later, Chester. Look, they got a fire going now. Smoke's coming out of the chimney. Breakfast. I'm so hungry. Now, why don't you chew on some of that slippery elm bark of yours? Slippery elm don't fill your belly. Now, a man can get along without food, Chester. Like Doc said. Well, uh, Miss Kitty's going to get something to eat. Yeah. Mr. Dillon, what in the world are we going to do? Well, right now, there's nothing we can do but sit here and wait and keep quiet. You know what'll happen if they find out we're here. I know, but I ain't thinking about it. Now, you better get back down now. I'll stay up here and where I can watch. Yeah, but they could see you, Mr. Dillon. Now, I've got a little bunch of buffalo grass in front of me here. It's enough. Keep your voice low, Chester. Okay. You know, if it wasn't for them in the cabin, it'd be awful peaceful out here, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mr. Dillon. What? The rattlesnake, he's behind you on top of the hole, about five feet back of your head. Whatever you do, don't move, Chester. Don't even breathe if you can help it. He's looking at me now, Mr. Dillon. How long is he? I can't see him. He, he's, a, he's a big one. Maybe three and a half, four foot. Huh. I can't see you either. How far are you from him? Far enough. Unless he uncoils, moves up. Well, just keep very still. He may go away. He ain't about to go away. Well, did you move? In my hand. Just a little. Well, don't do it again. 
Mr. Dillon. He's stretching out. He, he, he's moving. Which way? Toward you. Huh. Steady. He stopped. He's coiling again. Chester. Yes, sir. Look, if that snake strikes at me, don't yell. He'll hear you in the cabin. Just start thinking about it now. If he strikes you, just close your eyes and stop breathing. You hear me? Well, I'll try. You'll do it. You understand? Yes, sir. He's looking at me again. You must have moved, Chester. You must have. But I, I, I got my rifle aimed at. Now, you stop it. You get your finger off that trigger now. Well, I can't sit here and watch that rattler strike you. If you shoot, Kitty will die. Don't you know that? I, I, I didn't move. Bill, no, I didn't. He's, he's looking at you now. I'll let him look. I, I got to do something. I can't sit here and watch this. Wait a minute. Now, listen to me. I, I got an idea. What? Are you chewing? Huh? Are you chewing? Oh. Well, no, not right now, but I got a fairly fresh quid of slippery elm in the shirt pocket. Okay. Well, chance it. You get that quid into your mouth, but you do it slow. Slow and as steady as you can manage it. Once you start moving your hand, don't stop. Do you understand? All right, go ahead. Okay, sure. What for? Well, I'll tell you when you get it in your mouth. You doing it? Yeah, I already got my fingers in my pocket. There it is. Oh, slow and steady now. Yeah. I'm crying. It's in the mouth now. Oh, juice it up, Chester. Get a big mouthful. I am. All right. Now, I've heard you brag about how good you can spit. Can you hit that rattler from there? Maybe. Well, okay. Do it. Well, I... I only got one shot. I... I, I can't make it. I, I can't do it. Wait a minute. You got a mouthful. Well, have you? Yes, sir. All right, swallow some of it. Just a little bit. Now go on, swallow. I did. Now let it sit a minute. How's it feel? Like whiskey. Raw whiskey. All right. Now take your time. Make a move. Make him look at you. And then splatter him right in the eyes. Snake. Hey, snake. Look. Mm -hmm. I got him. I got him, Mr. Dillon. I got him. He's leaving. There he goes. He's gone. It, it worked. <sighs> forever, Mr. Dillon. They'll die of the heat cooped up in there. It's only about 10 o'clock, Chester. My, I hope they gave Miss Kitty some breakfast. Shh. Now the door's open. They coming out? They got your rifle. Easy now. It's Miss Kitty. Yeah. That's the Joe Carp behind her. Now there's his brother. They're all outside now. What, what are we going to do? We're going to kill them, Chester. You mean just shoot them down from here, cold blooded? How would you want to do it? I'm ready, Mr. Dillon. All right, then take the one on your side. That's the brother. I'll take Joe. Kitty's standing awful close to it. Yeah, she is. Now, when I say hold your breath, you do it. And then count to yourself. One, two, three, and then fire. I'm set. All right. Hold your breath. All right, 
Let's go, Chester. Get back inside, Kitty. Joe Carp's still alive, Mr. Dillon. He's reaching for his gun. What? They're dead. They're both dead now. Okay, Kitty. You all right? Good to see you, man. You too, Chester. You all right, I said? Shot them down like dogs, didn't you? Yeah, you bet we did. Thank you, man. Huh? Well, for pity's sake, you... She done fainted, Mr. Dillon. Well, it's a good thing you caught her. Here, I'll carry her inside, Chester. Come on, we'll get some breakfast going. They probably didn't feed her after all. star, William Conrad. Thank you. If you're a filter tip smoker, you should be smoking L&M's. Everyone agrees L&M's are just what the doctor ordered. The first filter that really does the job and a real good taste to go with it. Maybe you'll prefer L&M's king size, as I do. But either size, I know you'll like them, and I know you'll stick with them. L&M's. Try them. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Lawrence Dobkin, and Joe Duvall. Marley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. The makers of L&M Filters also present, for your television pleasure, the new Stu Irwin Show. It's a happy half hour with June and Stu Irwin, which begins October 20th in most cities. Please check your local television listings for time and channel for L&M's Stu Irwin Show. Hear Gunsmoke every Saturday, this same time, this same station. Hear the great new Perry Como radio show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, also on CBS Radio. This is the CBS Radio Network.